Hello and welcome to the Rise of the Pie Woman. My mission is helping decision makers gain more profit with machine learning insights. I'm Manya and I will help you understand and learn data science. Let's hop into the next section. Hey everybody, so welcome to the first vlog of the 30 vlogs in the section Rise of the Pie Woman. First of all, Happy New Year and wish you all the best. I bought this t-shirt especially for this first vlog. So today I decided that I was going to make this video uh, to tell you something really, really important. So I realized that a lot of people, uh, when they're trying to make a personal brand, uh, they, make a, they make a really big mistake. They're trying to sound actually bigger than they actually are. So even if you are a newbie or especially in data science field, it's actually the, uh, also important and inspiring to tell your story. So uh, the reason why I'm logging today and in the next 30 days is that in uh, 2040, a 16 years old uh, growing up girl can uh, look and entire story and journey of a 26 years old uh, girl uh, becoming a top data scientist. So that's the key reason why I'm vlogging today. So this first vlog will be just an introductory vlog. So uh, we will today talk about life expectancy and why it's so important to do something that you really love. Uh, at the end of um, this uh, vlog in, in the section, I will leave you two links where you should uh, look uh, uh, stories about two other data scientists and you should look at it. And it's really important to do that because uh, uh, from tomorrow we will begin to do technical tutorials and different tutorials on different topics. So you have to uh, see if you are ready for this. So first of all, as I said, life expectancy, you will see why it's so important to do something that you really love. And after that, we will talk about consistency. Why is consistency really important for data science and for becoming a, a part of becoming a data scientist? So for this uh, introduction, so uh, every day I will talk uh, about one specific topic. Also, you can uh, send me questions on Quora and I will uh, add uh, the questions that I think that are the most valuable for all of you that you're watching this uh, series. And of course, like, uh, so every day we'll have different stuff of doing. So for example, tomorrow we will do Seaborn visualization and so on. And on other days we will do like, uh, on one days we will do like, uh, how to make uh, proposals, uh, proper proposals to your clients. Another day we will do like uh, how to market yourself on LinkedIn, how to use LinkedIn to get your job, to get in order to get a job on my, in Microsoft, Google, or to get your clients. Uh, also, we will do like how to uh, make a branding and you know, how to market yourself uh, on all social media, uh, how to get uh, more clients, how to pay more for your work. Also, we will uh, learn uh, other soft skills like uh, how to communicate properly, how to make a presentation skill really good. So because it's really, really important to do that. Uh, and also we will uh, we will learn other technical stuff. So I will show you how to use Python. I will show you how to uh, prepare data, how to analyze data, how to use machine learning projections. So we will do different machine learning algorithms. We will also use Tableau for data visualization. Uh, we will, uh, all that we will do, we will do learning by doing, and then we will, uh, everything that we learn, we will do on uh, real exercises, real, uh, real uh, business cases from Kaggle, from Google data sets and other, so we will really uh, do the real stuff, so we will ha you will have at the, at the end of 30 days, you will know if, if data science is something that you really love and you're passionate about, or you really don't like it, but it will be a really good skill even though if after 30 days you don't like data science, because th then you will know what, what data scientists are doing, so in your company, even if you you are a founder or if you are like a manager in one on one of the companies you will have data scientists in your companies and it will be a really good uh, skill for you because then you will know what data scientists are doing how can they help you and what questions to ask them so it will be really really good skill for you uh, and as i said like uh, i know that like 90 percent of people don't know what they want to do for their life 
So these 30 days will be really helpful for you to in order to decide is data science a good career path for you. Uh, if at the end you will be that one that uh, really likes uh, data science, I'll be there to help you and guide you to to be uh, to become a top data scientist in this field. Because this part of this uh, series and after that they were coming is not I'm not I don't want you to become an average data scientist. I really want you to become a really really good and awesome data scientist because that's the reason why I'm here and I'm not I I'm not satisfied to be an average because I was never an average person. So first up, we will talk about life expectancy. So let's go and see what uh, what I mean by that when I say life life expectancy. So let's go. This is the average life expectancy. Keep in mind that these numbers are rough. So you can live longer than this uh, or uh, uh, less than this, uh, depending on uh, where you're living and your lifestyle. So we can see roughly here that here we will begin working and we will keep working, 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 working until we're 65. So you can see here that almost the biggest part of our life we spend working. Yeah. So, so we can see also like being a kid, being a kid is nice, being in retirement is also nice, but what about these years? So it is very important to spend this time doing something that you really, really love. Once these years are gone, they're gone forever. So, like, it's not the same, like, uh, time, you cannot uh, get back your time, you can spend your money, you can uh, earn your money, but time you cannot get back, so that's really, really important. So, uh, this life shouldn't be uh, just waiting for Friday or just waiting for retirement. Uh, I don't want to uh, scare you because it's the beginning of the year, especially, but it, especially it's really good point uh, to 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 say to say something now so like on average there are a lot of case studies based on this life expectancy and on average people who uh, hate their jobs they live approximately 60 years so they don't even make it on the, until their uh, until their retirement at 65 and people who love their jobs they live uh, 10 years approximately more than the retirement so they will live 75 years so it will be here like 75 years so you can see that's really important to love your job uh and one more really uh, good thing that uh this is really good period to look at your life and to see if you're satisfied and after this section and the section of uh, consistency you will see I will appreciate if you go and look uh, at your life and your job and see is data science uh, the place where you can change your life because this is time that you can change your life because this is the period that you can get into data science really easy and you can be an expert in two years to pass. And two years are not a lot. Because if you look at it, that you spend at least four years at your faculty, you can see that for two years, it's not so much time. And one more thing uh, before this section. So I'm in data science only for one year, and I'm better than average data science newbies because I'm passionate about data science. So I'm in love with data science, and that's important. So that's the reason why it's important to love your job. You can see for that. Because in order to become better than others and in order to become a top in your field, you have to love your job and you have to be passionate. And then when you're working, you will not feel that you're working because you love your work. So that's for this life expectancy. And let's go and talk about consistency and why consistency is important uh, in order to become a data scientist, in order to be a data scientist. Finally, 
we are now in our last section, as I said, like consistency and why consistency is really good and really important for data science. So let's go with, with examples. So if you were to go to gym and like after that you will go you will go and look you in the mirror and you will see nothing. Like after that you will go uh, tomorrow you will go again to the gym and again you will see nothing. And uh, so so clearly there are no results. So this is not effective and you will quit, right? So most of us will, will quit, right? So 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 if you fundamentally believe that that this is the right course of action and you stick with it, you will you will see the results in times coming. Uh, but but we we are uh, we are adjusted to short-term goals, so we want results immediately, and that that is not it's not like that. So, for example, if a boyfriend buys a present to his girlfriend and then she doesn't says I love you, uh, he will like okay she doesn't like me and she, he will break up uh, the relationship. And is that is that that we want? So that's not what happens. So if you believe there's something there. And you committed to that so like every single day after some some period of time you will know so you will know that uh, you love that person and that person will love you and you will know after the some period of time that you are a, a data scientist you will know that so uh, you can uh, you can also you can also screw it screw it up so you can also eat chocolate like two days in a row, or you can skip a day in the gym, and you can skip, like, uh, programming in Python, and that doesn't mean that you will, you will, you will be unsuccessful, 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 it means just, like, that you can do that, so it, it's, it's really important to be consistent, so doing, 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 doing on a regular basis, and making that habit, so, but, but, as I said, but if you, if you stick it consistently, after some period of time, you wake up in the morning and say, "Oh, I'm a data scientist." Like after six months, I'm knowing I'm doing projects in data science. Before six months, I didn't know shit, and now, like, I really know it. I'm not an expert yet, but I know it. I can do several projects, and that's awesome. And also, like after six months, like eating healthy, going to the gym, you will see the results. You will be into shape. That's it. So that's really, really, really important. So it's not about about the events. It's not about intensity. It's about consistency. So the mistake we are making about data science is that that intensity. So like uh, you think that uh, you go to the ten weeks uh, boot camp or you go to the conference, you have all that like uh, superb uh, data science uh, speakers, and at, at the end of that boot camp, you will get a certificate. They will say you are a data scientist, even if it's on MIT, like a MicroMasters on MIT. But that, sorry, but that doesn't make you a data scientist. So that uh, small little boring stuff that you're doing every day will make you a data scientist. Like waking up every every day in the morning at 6 a.m., like brushing your teeth every day, like uh, doing that Python every day for one hour, that will make you a data scientist. Like going to the gym, like because like uh, going to the gym like nine hours will not get you into shape, but going to the gym every day for 30 minutes or going to the gym like uh, every other day for one hour and 30 minutes, that will get you into shape because you were you were having a habit of doing something and it inevitably it will lead you to the to the to the to getting into shape. It's same in, uh, for data science. So it's a daily practice of that monotonous small things that you are doing. So like also like uh, that stuff, like when you're going to that conference and having a book, it's a really good stuff, but it doesn't make your data science. For example, uh, we need to go to the dentist like twice a year. And like if you uh, and your teeth will fall out. It, so if you don't brush your teeth every day for two minutes, two times a day, like uh, it, your teeth, teeth won't be really good. So going to the dentist and going to that boot camps and going to that conference will just, uh, you will see where you are. So 
uh, they will like lead you to the stick to that regime and you will know okay i'm here or i'm here or i'm here and i have to be uh and i have and you can be like uh, oh my god i'm so lazy or i'm not doing really good but it's really good because it's uh, like checking where you are and you can then uh, uh and you can then like uh, explore new stuff and you can like upgrade your skills and so on so so that's really 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 I important so as as i said like success success is not a particular things so it's not a particular things it was the accumulation of that the boring stuff that you're doing every day and then it will like uh, make you or make you or break you so uh, uh so so one day so you it will be like you push the button and then you will see like oh i'm really good at data science and that's what happened so like after six months like um, i i could not believe that i was doing data science even though i finished economics even though i didn't have uh, before six months i didn't have any knowledge of uh, programming languages and so but it's it's really uh, uh, uh it's really that uh doing that stuff every every day and like uh, so so people uh, people will look at that simple stuff that data science uh, like good practices and they will say that won't work so i know that like when i was uh, uh, publishing my first blog like uh, how to become and hacks how to, hacks how to uh, become a top data scientist in 6 months like 95% of people all people that i know and on linkedin and everywhere everywhere that i was posting they said that won't work and I said, okay, you are absolutely right. That won't work. But after six months, I am I'm, I'm in data science. So I'm my I'm, I'm full time doing data science, nothing else. So after six months, I'll find my special specialization. I'll find my niche. So now, like, uh, if you if you are like if you have some issues in your company and you need like machine learning engineer. You will call me. So I am specialized in machine learning only and only in the industries like digital health, marketing, uh, fintech and sports. So if someone who is like from like aviation or oil company, if they call me and if they like uh, ask me, can you do this and this? I will say, OK, I know because it's not my specialization. You can call someone else, some other data scientist, and I will like suggest who to call. That's also really, really good. And then, like, I specialize only for this. So I'm expert only for that. So, uh, so, and also I want to mention one really, really also important stuff. So uh, there is a difference between, like, I love my job and I like my job. I like my job. It means, like, yeah, they're paying me well. Uh, the project is challenging. And the people who I'm working, they're okay. But... Uh, I love my job, it means like uh, I don't want to work anywhere else. As I said, like I work only in this four industries. I don't want to work anywhere else. It doesn't matter how much money you will give me, I don't want. Because why? Because I love to do in that, that field. I love my clients or I love that kind of projects. So, uh, so I care desperately about my clients in that field. And I am deeply in love into data science. So data science, in order to become a really good data scientist, a top data science, you have to be deeply in love with data science, deeply in love with machine learning. That's the key issue. Uh, also, when you mentioned like that, the life expectancy that you already uh, discovered and already explained. So uh, you know, also know how your body, uh, how how your body feels after a good exercise, and how your body feels after the greasy meal. And you know that that first is good for your body and that other is not good for your body. Despite that, they taste like likewise. So that's why uh, we people uh, feel really good at short term. So that's the reason. So as I previously said, like uh, me, becoming a top data scientist is lonely. So it's a marathon. So it's not a short term, like 100 meters uh, uh, running. So it's really, really uh, tough stuff. So you have to be prepared for this uh and like i desperately care about my clients that's really important so at the end when you have like when you want to get job at uh, facebook google microsoft and so on or you have to or you want to be they to have to be your clients uh after that technical stuff and everything they will choose the person that they trust that's really important 
in order to gain that trust you have to share your knowledge and you have to uh, you have to tell the story about you to the world so uh, at the end businesses are people so we are doing businesses with people even though you will do like automatization machine learning and after that with uh, ie and so on but but people are really really important so like i know that my clients will say like that's my data scientist she's taking care of us she's taking care of our back and also she she has courage uh, for example, when I don't know something, I will say, okay, I don't know something. When I make the mistake, I will say I made a mistake and my clients love that. So it's some kind of tough love. And also like uh, I have a courage because it, it, it's hard to stand up against like uh, outside pressure. So it's, it's hard to resolve a company's issues and to say no to the short term goals. Because you have a lot of time that uh, clients want to, to do short term goals and that they are, they are not good for them. And you have to go there and say that to say no. And sometimes you will get far. Sometimes you will get rid of, of of all of your clients. But that's the courage. So that disting distinguishes you uh, between like being a average data scientist and being a really top data scientist. So uh, it, it you have to face of uh, face of overwhelming pressure. So only, as I said, only the best data scientists have that courage. And I can say that I have that courage. And that's the reason why clients are like uh, trusting me to do uh, to do their projects. Uh, as I said, like courage is ex external. So our courage comes from support of our clients, of our employees and so on. And mm, so that, that's really, really, really uh, uh, important. And also like my clients know that I won't give up. I will find the solution. Maybe at this point, I don't know the solution, but I'll find the solution. So because I'm really, really, uh, I'm a modern data geek and I will find the solution. So there is a no, no one, no one on this earth that will find solution if I cannot find it because I'll find it always. So uh, this is everything that I wanted to share today. So tomorrow we will do uh, visualization with Seaboard and also we will do visualization with the blue. So until next next time, uh, happy analyzing, uh, enjoy data science and machine learning, and share this with someone uh, you love and appreciate. So bye.